All right, exciting times. McCall's has come out with their early spring collection. And I'm wondering if any of you have noticed a correlation between the big pattern sales at Joanne and then a new pattern release. Like is Joanne just trying to clear out the drawers so that they can make room for the new patterns? If so, then we can have a bit more of like a predictive you know, kind of thing when it comes to like when the patterns are going to come out. Or is it just like an end of season thing that they're going to do four times a year? I'm trying to figure out, you know, if those sales are going to continue, how often, all of that kind of stuff. But let's take a look. This photo already here is making me very excited. So I am eager to see what we've got. Obviously, all of this was designed, developed, made, film, uh, photo shoot, all of that was done like deep into the pandemic, like possibly during the summertime. So we're going to try and be respectful of that <laughs> and understand that it's, it was a difficult time for all businesses, pattern companies not excluded. Okay, so our very first pattern here is called Sterling. It is a skirt pattern, slim five pocket pencil skirt with mock fly or zipper front in multiple lengths, vent and slit openings. So in a previous uh, First Impression Friday, I was confused about the difference between a mock fly and then like an actual fly. And all of you said that a mock fly does not have the <clears throat> does not have the fly piece on the inside. So the zipper touches your skin. And a lot of you hate that, which I understand. So it looks like that's what's going on here. I don't know why. Why wouldn't they just give you the fly piece? It's not like it's that much more fabric or pattern, you know, tissue. Is it just trying to make it simpler and easier for beginners maybe? Either way, they made theirs, obviously, in this leather. You also have this zip front um, with, like, a fully exposed zipper. Again, I'm assuming there's no covering, so all of this zipper touches your skin, making it, like, really cold and uncomfortable. And there it is in a denim. Here's the back side. So it is like a, a jean, you know, like jean pants, just into a pencil skirt. Um, it has the yoke, it has the back pockets, it has the belt carriers, um, and then you saw the like scoopy pockets in the front. This is really cute. Very, um, I don't want to say youthful, but I mean, I, I don't know, anybody of any age could wear this, but it, it gives off a I am young and hip and cool, you know, kind of vibe. Here are our line drawings. Here is the little vent they mentioned, or I guess this one's more of like a slash and this is a vent. The longer one gets the vent, if that makes sense. Cute, cute, cute. Um, you can see that they are on sale for the launch, but not what we're used to seeing in terms of sales. And then the yardage, fabric requirements are faux leather, velvet, velvet okay twill denim yeah any of those bottom weights for sure you need a separating zipper for the you know full zip one and then one zipper and a button for the mock fly the sizing is 8 to 16 incredible then they have an 18 to 24 and then they have a 26 to 32 this is new right Let's see what that means in terms of finished garment measurements. Good. At the hip line, so this goes from 36 and a half to 58. And 58, as we've discussed here recently, I reached out to someone who's kind of an advocate for plus size patterns. And she said that having a hip measurement of 58 was pretty standard for, you know, what would be considered a size inclusive uh, range. So that's great. That's really great. So happy to see that. Um, so yeah, I don't remember the women's going 26 to 32. Is this new? Do you, do you guys remember this? And then of course it doesn't take much fabric at all. Even the largest size only takes one and a half yards. Um, 
been interfacing i cannot imagine why you'd need one and a half yards of interfacing for this even if it is only 20 inches wide you're just interfacing the waistband so i don't know what that's about unless they have you interfacing the zipper also maybe that's it so you'd have like a lot of scraps left over and then the skirt b well the skirt b takes even more. I don't know about this. I don't know about this at all. But okay, good. Very promising. Next up, we have Parker, Mrs. Dresses and Belt. Okay. Okay. Mrs. Seam Blazer Dress with Sleeve Variations and Self Belt. Look at the micro bag, first of all. The styling is always so good. McCall's just kills it. Okay, so you've got your blazer. You've got your, you know, traditional notched collar. It looks to be a hidden, is that hidden buttons or are those, I can't, we'll have to look closer. Then you've got this incredible sleeve. I am obsessed with this sleeve cap into like a slim fitting sleeve. It looks so good. You've also got princess seams, a short sleeve option. That is exposed buttons for sure. Here are the princess seams again. And then this is like a regular sleeve cap, I guess. Her to tell. Princess seams in the back too. Let's look at line drawings. So short sleeve, yep, regular sleeve cap, and then a fuller sleeve cap. Now, obviously, this is a very close fitting situation, and she's this girl's pretty slim. Um, so if you've got you know the curvy curve situation, not that you can't make this. In fact, I think that the puffy sleeve will give even more of that like bam, 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 you know, hourglass shape. Um, but you would absolutely need to do some fitting for it. I don't think that a, just a normal grading would work for something like this. But I do love that it has all this shaping through the front and the back as well. Cute. Let's look at yardage. So crepes, wool blends, jacquard, and brocade, and then I'm guessing it's fully lined. Um, and then for A, you need seven snaps. So is she wearing A? Let's see. No, she's wearing C. So A has snaps. B and C has buttons. It's still hard to tell. I guess, yeah, the buttons are on the outside for B and C, but they're hidden for A. So that's kind of cool. Um, so 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24 on the size range. I don't know why they aren't overlapping. I love when they do like a 6 to 14 and then 14 to, to whatever. But I guess to add this extra size 24, they that's why they don't overlap. So it's like a give and take kind of thing. I get that. Um, okay, fabric, fashion fabric, two and three quarter yards, up to three yards for B, and a little more than three yards for C, and I think that they have different lengths, and that's why, and of course the sleeve obviously takes up a lot too. Then we have, look at this, finished bust line and hip line, so your bust is 34 to 50, <clears throat> excuse me, and the hip line is 36 and a half to 52. Still pretty good. I mean, not the full, full size range of like the women's patterns, but that seems better than usual. Am I right? Because what do I normally make? Well, yeah, I guess I, well, I might normally make a 22 in the hip. 2022. 20, yeah, I guess I would still be there. I don't know if the size range has changed or not. Okay, look how cute this one is for spring. This is the Jessica. 
When are we going to get a Lindsay? Is what I want to know. Okay, um, this is retro 80s style puff sleeve dress with slim and gathered skirt. Dress is lined, plain or shirred midriff, long and half sleeves are included. I will tell you guys this right now. If they come out with a Lindsay pattern, no matter what it is, no matter how wild, no matter how off, like not like my style it is, I will make it. I promise. <laughs> that will be fun. Okay. So we've got this surplus bodice, underbust gathers, kind of like a cummerbund situation, and then a fitted skirt. It's got the same, you know, big puff uh, sleeve cap into a slim fitted sleeve. You have this version here, which is the same, except it has a full skirt and then also a full sleeve as well. There's the version we saw on the model, but with the wider skirt. I want to see this shirt version they're talking about. In the back, we have darts for the skirt. It doesn't look like there's any for the bodice, though. And then you've got, you know, a full center back zip, invisible zipper in the back. Well, I don't know what they mean by the midriff. Let's read that again. Lined plain or shirred midriff. Huh. Plain or shirred midriff. I don't know what that means. They all look the same to me. <laughs> Slim and gathered skirt. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that means. But she's cute. So you need a zipper and then for that sleeve, there's a little bit of elastic in the, um, the hem of the sleeve. Uh, fabrics are brocade. These are for the slim skirts, I'm sure. Brocade cotton blends. And then for the fuller skirt, you can go into satin poplin. I mean, you could do a drapier fabric for this. But poplin would be nice to, you know, hold up the sleeve a little bit. But you could still do drapey if you wanted. Um, and then lining fabrics. So fabric requirements are up to two and a half yards. Totally kind of standard for a, a dress. This one is uh, calling for three and, an, and one eighth yards. Now that is probably because of that huge sleeve. Um, same thing for C, a little more than three yards for C. So a bit of a fabric hog, but the sleeves are really, really cute. And also this one too has that, you know, all of this takes up a lot of fabric too. So yeah, bit of a fabric hog Jessica is. Finished bust measurements, 33 to 48 and a half. And then A's hip line, which I guess B doesn't really matter. So I appreciate they left that off that someone's actually like using a brain over there it seems um 36 inches up to 51 and a half on the fitted skirt so cute jessica all right now we've got this little number called brandy with an i <laughs> mrs and women's knit pullover dress with faux ruched wrap sarong skirt i think i'm here for this elastic at a and c sleeves spaghetti straps for b i love a sarong with all of this ruching here you know creating those illusions over the belly like what belly is here you don't see anything um and then we've got of course the really great sleeve the length is exceptional. This is very, very retro. Like, um, what would that be? 50s? Well, not 50s homemaker, but 50s Hollywood. Jessica Rabbit. It has this um, square neckline with the elastic on the shoulders that I've been dying to try. It looks incredible on her. Oh, 
Okay, okay. So, all right, here are the options. So the bodice and skirt are the exact same for all three except for A is a shorter length. But I kind of love the longer length, especially with this whole peekaboo situation. Then you have a slim sleeve, a spaghetti strap, and this fuller sleeve too. They are on the trends, that's for sure. So this is knit, yeah. Two-way stretch knits, 50% stretch across the cross green. So jerseys, cotton knit, interlock. Um, yeah, I would not do a rayon a modal of any kind on this. Um, drapey is good, but not thin. So, and then a trico lining, and I'm assuming that's for the bodice. So you have like some extra support there. You could also do like a mesh or, you know, something like that. But um, elastic for the sleeve. And then again, we have the three sizes. So, and that, let me see size options. Yeah, there's going to be, that's got to be new. There's going to be three different envelopes in the pattern drawer that's great that's really great um okay so the uh what is this the shorter version is two and a half yards the spaghetti strap version is up to two and a half yards and then the longer version with a fuller sleeve is you know obviously a little bit more up to three and a half yards um and then lining yeah just half a yard because it's just for the bodice and then your finished bust line and finished hip line measurements are as follows. 29 and a half at the bust up to 52. And then 34 at the hip up to 57. Now remember, this is a closer fitting dress made out of a knit. So it is going to have some negative ease. So that makes perfect sense. And I love that they just didn't even bother with the, what, uh, the, uh, vertical you know how normally they're like finished length of this and finished whatever they didn't even bother with that they're only going bust and hip now I they have to be listening to me <laughs> they have to be I am convinced oh it's only taken what like three years okay look at this cutie Ashley okay princess seemed flared button dress Views include straps, puff sleeve, and belt, short, midi, and ankle lengths. She's cute. This is definitely like an 80s inspired fabric, so try not to let that dissuade you too much. But we've got a really cute um, sweetheart neckline, adorable puff sleeve, uh, button band, and this is the longer length with the self belt. And they just went all in on the 80s. Look at her watch. You know what I mean? And then this glitter buckle, they're like, if we're going, we're going. Um, here's the princess seam. So there's no waist seam. Now, some of you out there might really, really like that for the comfort aspect of it alone. Um, but yeah, this is straight from the 80s. I'm thinking of that movie, um, She's Out of Control. Please tell me you've seen that movie. It's one of my all-time favorite, favorite movies ever with Tony Danza. Oh my, I could quote so many, so many from that, but I can see her wearing this on like when she gets her big makeover, you know, it's such a good movie. Go watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, and then here's this version, really cute. They colored in the buttons to get like a rainbow effect. That's fun. Um, and again, it has that wide set um, shoulder with the elastic and then elastic at the sleeve too. So yeah, those are our three versions. Spaghetti strap, short length. This fuller sleeve. This looks to be the same length though. And then you have this longer length with um, like the mid, the elbow sleeve. And then the belt just goes right over top. It's not covering a waist seam. It just, you know, is truly an accent. Sorry about the sirens. Um, and then it also has the princess seams in the back. So I imagine this is going to take a lot of fabric because there is nothing, it's long pieces from bust to hem, you know what I mean? So, 
poplin, cotton blends, linen, and sateen. Yeah, they're really going for that like structured effect. Obviously, yes, you could make it out of something a little drapier, um, but you'd lose the effect of the sleeve and it wouldn't be as structured in the bodice either. And that button band might be a little bit, you know, flimsy. But you need eight buttons for A and B, 12 buttons for C, some elastic for the um, sleeve and some bias tape, and then a buckle for the, if you make the belt. The size range here is their Mrs. size range now, six to 14 and then 16 to 24. And then yeah, fabric requirements up, to, well, the spaghetti strap version is less than two and a half yards, so that's not bad. Um, and then three yards for the short version with the long sleeve and then five and a half for that long version. So, so yeah, try and find some thrifted fabric, some fabric on clearance, something like that, especially if you're just making it for the first time to make sure you're not using up all that fabric for something that won't fit. So we have a bust line measurement of 32 and a half to 48. And then your hip line, because it's so wide of a dress, does go up to 66 and a half. But this bust line is really important. I wish they would have included the waist because I do feel like um, the waist is a bit fitted. And that would have been helpful to know that prior to purchasing your size. But she's cute. I really like it. Ashley. All right. Look at this little bringing cutouts back. Okay, this is Vanessa. Did they just look up like popular names in the 80s? <laughs> I feel like that's Jessica, Brandy, Ashley, and Vanessa. I mean, those girls were like best friends in 1984. <laughs> Mrs. Dolman sleeve flared dress with cutouts, lower calf and mid knee links. Okay, so we've got a high neckline. Dolman sleeve, so there's no set in sleeve here, super easy to sew. And then you have the cutouts here sewn together right here. Um, and then just kind of like an A line simple skirt. This is actually very simple to sew with like maximum dramatic effect. This version adds a ruffle to the sleeve and is a shorter length. And then this is the longer length. I don't know the difference between this one and the one she was wearing. And then the back, it looks like maybe two hook and eyes. So you hook it like a bra and then you hook it around your neck. God, I wish we had somewhere to wear this because it is cute. Cute, cute. Yeah, I don't know the difference between B and C. Looking, looking, I don't see, other than the length, maybe the length is, no, oh, because A, I don't know, I don't know. Um, okay, so A is with a ruffle, B, and C. I still don't see the difference between B and C. Do you guys? What am I missing? Oh, it's a shorter sleeve. Good gracious. It's like those, um little games like which do you look at the two pictures and find the differences Whew, I was never good at that to begin with and <laughs> I'm not that much better at it now okay yardage wise we are going for crepe georgette cotton blends and chalet and then lining it in wall so the wall is going to give the chalet and the lighter weight like georgette and crepe a little bit um more structure and then you need an invisible zipper for the skirt portion and then a hook and eye. It only says one hook and eye though. Maybe that's just a mistake because there has to be two of them. All right, fabric wise, for the shorter version, two and a quarter yards. For the longer versions, two and a half ish. Um, up to two and a half ish for that and then linings oh she's fully lined fully lined okay okay um and then interfacing for all three of them and then finished measurement at the hip line goes up to 59 inches it's a pretty close fitting 
hip with not a lot, not a ton of ease. Um, and I'm assuming they didn't include the bust because the dolman sleeve makes it roomier. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But for those of you who are like, well, how will you wear a bra with this? Well, one, you wouldn't. Or it's just a little itty bitty slit, you know? So maybe, like she has her arms pulled forward and this is all you're seeing. So you could do like a bralette would be really cute. Um, or I just, if you did a zipper, I just don't know how you would zip it by yourself. So if you always had someone to help you into it, you're entourage you could totally zip it closed but for the most part I think you're just gonna have like a little peekaboo down here somewhere but man they got the fit here spot on that's gonna be the most challenging part is fitting this so that part of women's bodies is just not very standard I don't think okay next up we have Lauren this is a Mrs. Elasticized Pullover Dress with Drop Shoulders and Godet Skirt. Okay. Long Sleeves Self Belt. Long Sleeves Self Belt. Okay. So, drop shoulder, meaning it's supposed to hang off the shoulders a little bit. Then you've got this full sleeve with elastic. I'm assuming there's a waist seam here and no darts or anything happening in the bodice. So very loose fitting, elastic under here, and then these godets. And you can kind of see them here. They're like little triangle insets. A godet makes, as you can see here, a very frilly skirt, especially in lightweight fabrics. You can see them really well here. Yeah, doing them in a contrast fabric is really popular um, just to make them stand out but if you do them in all the same fabric too um, it still looks really cute so they made theirs out of something a little more structured so it poofs out a lot but and then you can see here the facing I love that it's a pull-on because of the elastic pull it over your head yeah here's the contrast go day and then the same sleeve. So the only difference is no sleeves. And then you have a sleeve with all one fabric and a sleeve with contrast fabric. Those are the differences there. Okay. So our yardage is cotton blends, lawn, chalet, and even stable knits. So like lightweight ponte, um, even like a uh, cotton jersey would be considered maybe a stable knit, especially if it's like a mid-weight one, a good hardy mid-weight one. You need some elastic and elastic. Okay. And then 6 to 14, 16 to 24 on the size range. I'm loving the consistency there. Um, from pattern to pattern, I mean. Sometimes they'll jump back and forth, um, but it looks like they're all consistent here. Fabric requirements up to two and a half, two and three quarters three and one quarter and two and five eighths on that oh and then you also need your contrast so yeah C takes quite a bit of fabric because you got to add these two things together finish measurement at the bust line goes up to 52 inches yeah this one is deceptively easy to fit because it is somewhat fitted in the bodice but not really and then you've got elastic here so that's a cinch to fit and then the the hip is very wide so that's a great little beginner pattern might include this in the um in one of the sew along options to for people to vote on okay this is allison mrs sweetheart princess bodycon sheath dress yes so Sweetheart neckline, the same elasticated shoulder we've been seeing a bunch of, elasticated, poofy sleeve, um, raglan kind of situation there. Sorry. Um, then you have the princess seams here, and then this really pretty little flounce added to the hem. This is like straight up from the 80s. I mean, I mean, right? Can't you see that on like Julia Roberts and Pretty Woman or something? 
so it's cute. But I, I still feel like she looks really modern. It doesn't look like she is wearing a vintage dress. Now, if she had made this version specifically out of, like, a ditzy print, for, uh, yeah, for sure, throwback. But in this solid, like, whatever fabric this is, it looks really good. Here is the back. So the back has princess seams as well. And then an invisible zipper squared off. Yeah. Fun. Allison. Allison's a party. Um, yardage wise, brocade, cotton blends, satin, and poplin. Um, you could probably even do like a cotton sateen, something a little bit more structured. And then lining fabrics. Is she fully lined? No. I think that one and five eighths, one and five eighths. Oh, I don't know. What is maybe just this portion is lined? That's gotta be it. And then out of your fashion fabric, um, two and three eighths, two and a quarter, two and a half. So right around that two and a half mark. And then finished garment measurements in the bust line go from 33 to 48 and a half. And the hip line is 35 and three quarters up to 51 and a half. But again, she doesn't have very much ease in her at all. Maybe an inch or two. Um, it's cute. I can see a lot of people looking really good in this. If they just kind of go for it, you know, and just accept the silhouette. <laughs> All right. Check this out. We're moving into tops now. This is Myrtle. Myrtle Macaws. Myrtle sounds like, I don't know. Myrtle does not sound like what this looks like. That's for sure. Um, peplum wrap top with cowl sleeve variation. So this is called a cowl sleeve. I never knew that. But Kelly Ripa was just wearing a top just like this on her show earlier this week. So people are making it. And look, you've even got this. Yeah, they just went to the 80s archives and just pulled out all the 80s patterns. Every single one of them. Um, it's cute. You could obviously lengthen this to a dress if you wanted. That would be really easy. This is out of like a shirting, I think. You do have some darting going on, so there is some shaping. And, you know, the wrap is not, you know, showing a lot. It's not super low. I mean, yes, there's a little bit there, a um, little bit of cleavage, I mean, but not egregiously so. And then here are our line drawings. The sleeve is really the only thing that changes from one version to the next. And she seems to really like it. You know, these models are not very good actresses most of the time. And so you can see on their face when they're wearing something they think is ridiculous. But she knows that this is cute and on trend. <laughs> okay, yardage. So Charmeuse, Crepe, Shally, and Lawn. They must have used a lawn for theirs, I guess. Theirs feels very, like, not super drapey. Um, okay. One button... One button. Is there a button in here? Maybe. Um, one inch ribbon. This is for all three versions. So this must be something to construct. The ribbon and the twill tape must be to construct a sleeve somehow. And then B also gets some extra twill tape. Which one was B? Her version with this down here. So there must be, that must be, must be how you keep these um, pleats in place. I'm guessing. So this has the three different size ranges. Um, fabric requirements up to two and a half, three yards. That sleeve, man. The sleeve will get you. Then there's netting in the sleeve heads to keep it nice and poofy. So that's something cool and fun to try. And then a measurement at the bust line. I'm not sure that on a wrap dress that really, or a wrap top that really matters, but it goes up to 57 and a half. Cute. I think these are going to fly, you guys. I really do. All right, Monica. 
Monica is, yeah, a look for sure. Scoop neck boned corset top with lacing or separating zipper front opening shaped hemlines. You know that they want to put Monica with that first skirt. So you've got your lace up. You've got a fully boned corseted top with this little elasticated sleeve. Big scoop round neckline. That's the one with the zipper, I think, and no sleeve. Oh, no, that looks like a zipper, too. Oh, and the little pointy front thing. Yeah, I mean, a thousand percent not my style, but it's cute, but not for me. Not even close. <laughs> this will never end up in my stash, no matter how cheap the patterns are. Okay, yardage, cotton blends, twill, broadcloth, sateen, and then it's lined with a cotton lawn, 16 grommets, some ribbon, some elastic, or a separating zipper, separating zipper, and then boning. So, good little scrap buster, one in one eighth, one, one, one. So, you don't need a ton of fabric for it. Fully lined. And then the finished bust measurement goes from 34 and a half up to 50 inches. Cute though, but not for me. All right, next up, she likes this, she likes this, um, what would that be, left side of her face. Look, she's always looking to the left. <laughs> um, Jennifer! Hey girl, hey. Um, so this looks like a, a tuxedo vest. Mrs. Button Prairie Puff Sleeve, peasant top. Hems include cropped, ruffled, and pointed. Three quarter and long sleeves. Top is lined with princess seams and sweetheart neckline. I really feel like they went all in on the details. Like a fully lined little top like this with three different um, hems and two different sleeves, like, okay, McCall's, right? Maybe that, maybe that this is maybe one of those silver linings to the pandemic where they were really able to kind of like step back a little bit and say like, maybe we've lost our way a little bit. What are the customers looking for? You know, why are they all flocking to indie patterns? And maybe we can give them some more of that. And so they're giving us like a ton of options, really well finished, you know, regardless of the design. But this is the little ruffle hem, so cute. And then that is just a straight hem, big sleeve. Now, I will say I'm not so much of a fan of this with the like pointed, the, the ruffly one I can see myself making and wearing. This pointy one, not so much. But I think that you could take the straight hem one, this one here, and sew on a skirt. Any skirt that has a waistband. You just match up the waist seams. I'm pretty sure that you could do that. Especially if it's like a gathered skirt or something. Oh, but you have buttons. So you would want to make it a button front skirt too. But you could do that and make it into a dress. Or... Take this and extend it out, whatever this looks like, the pattern piece. So, I just don't know if this, like, you know, cropped situation is really for me. But the sleeves are cool. Even this one. Very, very, very trendy. Um, yardage. Okay. Cotton blends, poplin, broadcloth, sateen. The other really good thing is, yes, these sleeves take up a lot of fabric, but these fabrics, cotton blends, poplin, broadcloth, are all very inexpensive. I mean, you can find, there's just, it's like supply and demand. There's just so many of them on the market that they go on sale a lot. Um, so you can find some really affordable fabrics because, yeah, these are going to take up these sleeves are going to take up a lot of fabric. So there's your fabric requirements. Um, one and a half yards, two and an eighth, and then just under two. And then you've got seven eighths of a yard of lining and then a whole bunch of interfacing. 
So I'm not entirely sure where they stuck the interfacing. I know it's here for sure, probably in the button band also. But that doesn't seem like more than a yard, but maybe. And then finish bus line, 33 up to 48 and a half. It's cute. I, I do like it. I do like this upper part. I would just need to figure, I, I would never make this version, would never make the crop version. Um, and I would never buy a pattern where I only want one of the versions unless I could hack it into something else like a dress. Okay, this looks familiar, does it not? Who? What indie company has this pattern? They just came out with it. Um, what's her name? Katie. Katie something that always makes the really wild uh, clothing with the bright colors. Courtman or something. Katie something. She's made a bunch of these. Uh, these are cute. These are really cute. There's an indie pattern company. I can't remember who it is. Maybe Fiber Mood? Oh, no. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, this oversized bib thing is is happening. Um, Mrs. Peter Pan. Ruffled collar blouses with long and short leaves. View A has a ruffled collar. View B and C has a large collar. Larger than this? I mean, yeah, it's a large collar. Is this like some kind of Swiss dot? That's a really good application for it. You can see the facing here. You know, if, it, if you make it out of a sheer-ish, um, you can see the differences. Um, the sleeve is a little bit sheer, and then this would be opaque. And, of course, that collar is opaque as well. This is it. Um, she has hers tucked in, which is why it looks more fitted. But that's this is the actual hem. And this one has this sleeve detail as well, sleeve ruffle. Then they've added, I think, a lace uh, trim. No, no sleeve funkiness. It's just a short sleeve. It's cute. It's real cute. In her Levi's and everything. Yeah. What was the name of this one? Mallory. Mallory. All right, let's see. Cotton blends, poplin, chambray, and dobby. Maybe this is a dobby. Um, I, I think it'd be equally cute in a seersucker. Lots of great options. Um, okay, so notions. Buttons. Buttons, yeah, button front, okay. Um, and then one and an eighth yard of scalloped edge lace trim. So that's what that was in this version here. You can have a lot of fun with that. There's some really, really cute options of um, lace trim. It doesn't have to be scalloped edged, but it does need to be finished on one end. Cute. Cute. Oh, man, I like too many of these. I like them because they are so over the top. And I think that being in... Um, <laughs> loungewear for a full year at this point my you know my fashiony like creative outlet in terms of what I wear is just like desperate to break out of this cage but um fabric requirements are up to one and three quarters of a yard two yards two and three eighths of a yard so depending on your sleeve I guess and of course that ruffle um whatever one is the least is probably the one that um yeah, so if you buy this scallop trim, then obviously you're not using your fashion fabric for that. So that's why this one, you can get away with two yards. Okay, and then finished bus line measurement is 33 and a half up to 49. Because it's the 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24 size range. Okay, we've got a couple jumpsuits. There's a lot of patterns, you guys. This is called Bowery. Why do I feel like we already did a Bowery? Remember there was that one collection where it was like all places around New York City? Seamed romper and jumpsuits with pocket options, drawstring detail, belts, and hem variations. So I have this thing about button front or zip front jumpsuits. It's just really odd right here in this area. Like the way, you know, 
but maybe I'm the only one that would notice that. I don't know. This pocket does have a little bit of pizzazz, and I like that there's no waistband. These nice big elastic cuffs. I'm assuming that's what's going on here too. We've also got some kind of seaming. So it's got like a front yoke and then a drop shoulder. So pretty easy to sew that sleeve in. This one has big patch pockets and then look, these little notches. <gasps> well, 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 way to just change my mind completely. I love uh, this. This is that same detail that I did on that sweater top. I'd never considered doing it across a yoke. I'll be doing that for sure. And then the wide leg pant, I love. Oh, it even has this little doodad. And like, I don't know if these are darts. Oh, oh like another one. What am I going to do? Oh, and it's alphanumeric sizing as well. That's interesting. Did we not see the line drawings on this? Oh, I just skipped them. My bad. Okay. Well, these are bigger. Let's look at these. Um, so I think all of the necklines are the same. Yeah, all the necklines and center fronts are all the same. Um, you've got the princess seams on all of them. You've got the front yoke and the back yoke on all of them. The only difference is the addition of these pockets. How cute would that be in the chambray? Um, and then this, this is like technically no sleeve. It's just the, the dolman drop shoulder. And then you can add this sleeve with a little cuff. They all have this detail in the back. This one has elasticated um, ankle cuffs, but regular cuffs on the sleeves. And this one has the little slits in the front. And then this is your wide leg one. Dang it, I want this so bad. But would I make these other ones? Just to hang around the house without this? That's a lot just to hang around the house. I don't know. Maybe I would get it, make this one, see what I think, and then... Because you could also... I don't know how different this thigh measurement is compared to this one. Is this, like, closer fitting, you know? I don't know. Oh, man, I like this one a lot. Okay, twill, crepes, denim, and cotton blends. Um, buttons, D-rings, buttons, D-rings, elastic... And then cording for that little ruche detail. It does go up to a 2X. And we'll quickly look at the finished garment measurements for that. So bust line is 36 to 53 and a half. Now that, to me, I mean, it's a very generous bust. You know, very loose fitting. The fact that the hip, finished hip, is the same as the bust line that to me is either a mistake <laughs> on this listing or that just illustrates how roomy the bust is. Uh, it would be like a roomy bust and then a close fitting hip. But the fabric requirements are up to two and a quarter, four yards for jumpsuit B. Which one was that? The one she's wearing. And then jumpsuit C, the one I like the most, only takes three and a quarter yards. Does jumpsuit C have a waist seam? No. I wonder, oh, because of the sleeve. That darn sleeve. And the pocket. Okay. So that makes sense. Oh, man. Bowery is cute. Now we've got this little, like, blazery one. You guys, McCall's, my goodness. The little purple color, oh, everything. Man, okay. Tuxedo, tuxedo style jumpsuit with notched collar, front zipper, pleats, and side pockets. Oh, gosh. Okay, so there's the zipper here, and then I guess this... Like, you know how your waistband will have, like, an extended tab? I think that's what's happening. That's how you're able to get it into a jumpsuit. That's quite ingenious. You also have princess seams, notched collar, 
it's a low situation, but I think they've also maybe folded it out a little more to, to, you know, you could definitely not have this much showing if you made this little narrower, but you've got these little front, um, pleats, slim leg. Here it is in like a sailory version out of, um, boucle. So cute. That's the version she's wearing without a sleeve. It does look a little low, am I right? This waist, if this is supposed to be the natural waist, my goodness, it's way too long. But if it's supposed to be a drop waist and end at your high hip, then okay, it works. Yeah, it does appear even in the line drawings to be dropped. There's also this version, which they didn't show. Okay, here are our line drawings. I'm surprised they did not add a wide leg. Not difficult to do or hack on your own, but I'm surprised they didn't offer one of those. I guess cost-wise of the tissue because there's already so much happening. But you've got the romper version, so cute. Um, and then here's the purple version she was wearing. And then this is that black version that has contrast collar. I wish they would have shown that. Yeah, they just forgot to add the photo. Oh, well. Oh, well. All right, and this comes in... The, yeah, Mrs. Size Range, Crepe Suiting Gabardine, and then you can do like, truly like a tuxedo, the cotton, the, I mean, sorry, the contrast satin or charmeuse, and then you need an invisible zipper, two pant hooks and bars, and then A and C need shank buttons, that's a, for that like sailory button detail. Two and an eighth. Uh, just about three, just about three, and then some interfacing. That's for the collar, um, and not no lining. So I'm assuming it has some kind of like facing in here. Yeah, and then a cute little notch. Oh, okay. Finished bust is thirty-two and a half up to forty-eight. And then the hip line is 50, I'm sorry, 35 and a half up to 51. It's fun and cute. Fun and cute. Valerie. This looks a lot like Valerie, but it's called Brighton. You guys know I love a cropped jacket is this make this detachable to some oh no 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 double breasted double breasted okay double breasted lined vest and jacket with notch collar and multiple links okay this is cute it's kind of like moto plus blazer I don't know what this is. I don't feel like this belongs. This is a mistake. This is what happens whenever I do the first impression reviews like less than 12 hours after they've been released. Look at that with the little peplum top. So cute. But I'm digging the cropped blazer even in the plaid. Like make it a blazer but cool. Like a cooler blazer. Here are some pants. Are we about to see those pants? No, it's not a mistake. What the actual heck? This is a... Oh, man. I, I don't know. Is this a dress? Double-breasted lined vest and jacket. So the black one's the vest? That's wild. I mean, I guess it's no big deal because it's just, you know, a lengthened version, but it looks like two different patterns. And I, I'm having a hard time visualizing how you would style this. Is it a dress? Do you wear it over, like, leather leggings or skinny jeans? How do you wear this? I wish they would have done... I don't know what I wish. <laughs> and then where are these pants? 
Like, why isn't she still in the jeans? So many questions. So many questions. All right. Wool crate, gabardine, wool blends, tweed, and lining fabrics. And then for the crop version, two buttons. And then for the peplum and then the longer version, six uh, buttons. And another women's pattern. This is what, number four now? So you plus size girls are probably just like over the moon. We haven't had four maybe ever. I think they've only ever had two. Um, so you guys have so many options. I'm so happy. Uh, fabric requirements are two and an eighth yard for the cropped version plus a lot of lining. So it may be fully lined or at least the entire, um, no, I think that's fully lined. And then two and three eighths of a yard plus lining and then three yards for that vest and then lining. They also need a lot of interfacing. So finished bust line is 35 and a half to 58 and a half and finished hip line for the vest, although it opens a bunch, but 37 and a half to 60. Yeah, I guess it's still a little bit close. It's still like a little bit like the split doesn't really happen till down here. It's cute. And I feel like, you know, she's a fuller busted woman and I feel like they, they did an okay job with this. I mean, the, this one's a little long and this one's a little bit funkadunk. <laughs> I don't know what's happening there. Um, you can see it's just a little bit big on her, I think. Especially because it's open. Maybe if it, when it's closed, do we have a picture of it closed on her? No, which makes me think it might have even been worse. But just check the darts as you go up in the size range. Because clearly something's off in the darts. But I like it. I like it. Okay, here are the pants that she was wearing. Mercer, again with the New York references, but pleated trousers, short and pants with double welt pockets and extended waistband. Yeah. Um, sorry, I just got a text message. That's what that ding was. Um, okay, so fly front, right? Yep, fly front. This is that extended waistband with a little hook and bar. You've got your sla uh, slash, no, slant pockets and your pleated front. Kind of a cropped length. Here's a short version with a cuff. That is like a knee length version, like a Bermuda short. Oh, here it is with it closed. Okay. So yeah, closed, it's a little bit better, but definitely something happening here like a lot happening here like it's pulling here but there's too much fabric here and then also here what's happening so if you're a sucker for you know a tailored blazer I would be a little bit leery <laughs> of this one. Oh, but it's a learn to sew level three okay and they made it a learn to sew pattern um, I think last year, maybe late 2019, they broke out the Learn to Sews into different levels. And three is the most difficult of the Learn to Sews. It also has these little back welts. So, you know, Learn to Sew. Faux leather, corduroy, wool blends, and gabardine, and then lining fabric. I think the lining might just be for the waistband. Yeah, just half a yard of that. And then you need a zipper, hook and bar closure, and then it has the the full size range. That's another one, a fifth plus size pattern. One and three quarter yards for the shorts. The knee length shorts are one and five eighths, and the pants are two and a half. Fusible interfacing and lining. And then the measurement at the hip line goes up to 64 and a half inches. So pretty roomy hip, which I like to see. The pants, I don't see anything egregiously wrong with the fit of the pants, but that jacket, I'm just like, something's, something's up with the fit of this. And I don't think it's the way she's posing. She, I don't think she's doing anything 
out of the ordinary with her her arms so but I like it together do you guys like it together I think it's kind of fun even if she didn't have a tank you know even if it were like showing a little bit of midriff that could be cute all right our last four patterns these feel like they were left over from the holidays but regardless here we are uh, pearl tie top and high-waisted pleated skirt with high-low train and lower calf length unless they're preparing for proms but i think we all know proms are not going to happen so they're just getting them out there and then they'll i guess sell them later i don't know but it's really cute um very revealing i mean there's gonna be some under boob here <laughs> for sure especially if you're fuller busted but i do appreciate the princess seam with the gathers that's sweet in this like you know heavy satin fabric so it's real structured and then this super deep super high-waisted waistband and then these really pretty pleats into your high-low skirt hem you can also just make the top and just make the skirt. Is it two pieces? Is the one she's wearing two pieces? It might be. In which case, it would be really good for like resort wear, which again, not a lot of people are headed to resorts, but maybe. Yeah, I think it is two pieces. Okay. Definitely two pieces. All right. That makes a little bit more sense. Regardless, the underboob situation is still prevalent. I don't know how you would get around that. Maybe like someone who has some experience in lingerie making could weigh in. Um, would you add an underwire? Like how do you get that to be really fitted, especially in like the center front lower boob area? So here's our top and then two different skirts. It's cute. I have nowhere to wear this, but it's a sweet design for sure. All right. Taffeta, Dupioni, Poplin, Shantung. Um, invisible zipper, horsehair braid for B. So that must be the hem of this skirt. Good for them. That's going to make it like real, real, I don't know, not floofy, but big. <laughs> um okay six to 14 and then 16 to 24 the top only takes one yard of fabric uh lining for the top also for those bust cups i guess and then four yards for the skirt then four and a half for the um skirt c which which one c c is the high low did it say a lower calf length so that's how long B is, lower calf. And then the finished bust line measurement is 33 to 48 and a half. Yeah, if we weren't in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, this would make a lot of sense. But maybe they just feel like, you know what, we're going to put them out anyways. The world will resume one day and then the patterns will be in existence at that time. Or maybe people... They assume people will want to just build out their stash, and so they would buy them anyways. I don't know. But this is a high neck dress with two skirts and sleeve variations called Aster. So we've got the high neck, a uh, raglan sleeve, very puffy, into a cuff. We've also got this midriff and then a maybe a bias cut skirt. That would be nice. Uh, there it is without sleeves and a slit. Shorter sleeves, a little bow in the front. Oh, and it's open in the back. Certainly you don't have to do that, but that's how they're getting you into it. Um, but yeah, you could, could you? Because there's no front. So if you had this fully, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, you could zip this closed. I don't know what I was... My brain wasn't working. 
Um, let's look at the line drawings. So it doesn't indicate that it is a bias cut skirt. That would be nice, but I'm thinking maybe not. We'll look at the, I think that the um, fabric requirements might tell us more. Um, but yeah, it's cute. It's a little, um, especially this version with a bow in the front, is a little, um, oh, I don't know. It's giving me some kind of like historical reference. I just don't know which one. This one feels very 80s. This one's cute, though. I could see myself wearing that. Okay. We've seen all those. All right. Um, yardage. Charmeuse, crepe back satin, which I think is what they used on uh, the sample. And then crepes. And then lining fabrics. Okay. Invisible zipper, hook and eye, and half six buttons. Oh, for the sleeve. For the sleeve cuff. So three and a half yards on a, let's see. Yeah, I'm thinking it's not a bias cut. You could cut it on the bias though. You would just need a lot more fabric. The lining is one and five eighths of a yard. So I think it's the full bodice. Three and three quarter yards for B and two and one eighth yards for C. Yeah, without the sleeves. Those sleeves. Um, and then finish bust line is 33 inches to 48 and a half. And then the hip line measurements are 36 and a half to 52 and 35 and a half to 51, depending on if you're making the slim skirt or the full skirt. So just one inch less of ease in the slim skirt. And then the, just the misses sizing. All right, now we've got oh, another cute top. This is called Waverly. Um, pullover tops with raglan sleeves and neck variations. That's cute. You guys, I seriously like 90% of these patterns. Like, not just like, okay, let me put it this way. I like 90% of these patterns. I would probably buy 75% of them. <laughs> what am I going to do? I have to go through my stash and get rid of stuff that I just don't see myself wearing anymore. But we've got a raglan sleeve into this little bow collar. Um, and then the sleeve. I mean, look how beautiful that sleeve line is. Um, into this elastic uh, hem of the sleeve. It doesn't have anything going on with the hem of the bodice, but you also have this version with the ruching in the shoulder. Love that. Yep, just a little keyhole in the back. So B and C, oh, the collar? I mean, the, yeah, the bow in the front, is that the only difference? Yeah, looks like all the bodices are the same. It's just the sleeves and the one collar detail that's different. Cute. Charmeuse, crepe, cotton blends, and chalet. A button for the collar, I think, or for the neckline. And then elastic and hooks and eyes. Which one is C and why does it get extra hardware? The one she's wearing. So must be something about how this bow is constructed where you need those hooks and eyes. Okay, and alphanumeric sizing. Um, two and an eighth, two and three quarter, two and five eighths, depending on the view that you're making. And then just some fusible interfacing for the collar. And then bust line measurement goes up to 55 inches. It's pretty roomy blouse. The hip is really roomy too. They're calling it the width at the lower edge, but it would also kind of just be your hip line measurement, but up to 63 inches for that. You know, this ends right at your hip line, I think. So. And then our last one. This is Carol. 
bias cut, here we go, bias cut or gathered skirt with gathered overlay yoke. I mean, it is a really cute look with the crop top and everything. I mean, they just nailed the styling. Okay, so this is bias cut. I've said this a thousand times. The curvier you are to me, the better a bias cut skirt looks. The way that it just, it hugs your curves in a way that's not clingy. I don't, it's really hard to explain until you put one on. Um, I, I found one at Goodwill once. Um, and I just was like, let me just try this on just to kind of see what all the hype is about. Um, and it really is incredible. It feels, I don't know, it just feels like nothing, but at the same time, it feels very flattering. I, I don't know. For me, it was an instant like mood booster. I was like, dang, look at me. I didn't end up buying the skirt because it was too big. Was it too big or too some or maybe it had a stain on it. I don't know. Some reason I didn't end up buying it, but I was like, I get it. I get the bias cut skirts, um, especially in like a silky type fabric. But here it is with the gathered Dumahick. Um, that's a kind of a lot. That's cuter in a shorter length. But it looks like there's a seam here. So all of this is constructed like on the straight green or whatever it is. And then this portion, the lower portion, is what is cut on the bias. And you can just see here. See how it even just like flares out ever so slightly for her uh, calf? It's doing that naturally. This is a this is a straight line on the pattern. But because it's cut on the bias, it just, I don't know, it just is miraculous. It's just wonderful bias cut. I just love it so much. So there you go. Yeah, I can't imagine wearing this, either any of these versions, with anything other than a really close-fitted, maybe not a crop top, but really close-fitted top just to let this little gathered yoke thing do its thing. All right, so fabrics are poplin, crepe, washed silk, and satin. Now, for a while, Joanne had this fabric called sanded satin. It was in their, like, um, Casa Creations section, you know, where all the, not where the silky types are with the fashion fabric, but it was over, like, with the bridal fabrics, and they were all solid colors, and they are incredible. Um, I don't know if they still have those or not, but that would be a perfect fabric for this little skirt if you're looking to make one. All you need is an invisible zipper. It's the Mrs. sizing. And then the fabric requirements are kind of high because that yoke. Um, but two and an eighth yards, two and three eighths yards, and then four yards for the longer version. And then you also need a little bit of lining. That is for the yoke. And I imagine that on the inside, the yoke lining piece is flat. Like there's not all this. You can, you, oh, how do you explain it? Like the, the, Lining is one rectangle, and then the yoke part is like a bigger rectangle that you squoosh down to fit into the size of the smaller rectangle, and that's what creates all the gathers, but keeps them in place at the same time. Does that make sense? Um, and then no bust line, but the hip line measurement is 35 and a half up to 51. So, cute. Yeah, I wish they would have thrown these in the holiday collection. Maybe they just weren't ready yet, but I feel like that would have done wonders for that um, for that release. But you guys, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's find the, where is the lookbook? Oh, where's the lookbook? Here, lookbooks. Um, I am just floored. I guess I was, maybe expectations are low <laughs> from the previous year or longer, if I'm being honest, but this is quite the collection for sure. All the things that I have been wanting to make, all the things that I can see myself wearing, um, just real, real 
strong collection. Let me know what you guys think of this. Is it just me? I'm starting to feel like, like, I don't know, I've been um, hypnotized. <laughs> and like, I don't think I've ever liked a, an entire collection as much as I like this one. So that's a lot. There's a lot to be said for that. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Um, but otherwise, that's going to do it for me today. I will see you all very soon. Bye.